Hi, this is episode 57 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. When going through the coding interview process, the topic of sorting algorithms arises regularly, which begs the question of why are sorting algorithms important to understand as a developer? I remember back when I started taking computer science classes at Texas Tech. Now you have to know that I taught myself programming, so essentially I took a backwards approach to learning computer science, which means that I learned how to build real world applications first, and then I got my bachelor's in computer science and later on have gone into grad school. My approach to learning caused me to have some issues when I started learning the formal version of the sorting algorithms. My main point of contention was that they didn't seem very practical, or at least a study of them didn't. The professor spent weeks going over various sorting algorithms, and all I could think of was that I could accomplish the same result by simply calling the sort method, which would only require a single line of code. At first I thought the issue was in the age-old debate of practical versus theoretical learning. This is something you come across quite regularly in discussions around traditional education versus skill-based education. So my initial reaction was that I only needed to learn enough to pass the class and move on with my development life. However, during the course of the semester, my entire perspective changed and I realized that my first reaction was actually quite naive. So why are sorting algorithms important? And why are they the most consistently asked questions during coding interviews? The real reason is subtle, and you may need to discover it for yourself, but hopefully you can take some of my advice and believe it. Your reaction to this guide may be the same that mine was when I attended my first algorithm class, and for that I completely understand some things you just have to learn on your own. I personally may have gone my entire life with the same negative mindset towards a study of sorting algorithms if it wouldn't have been for one of my professors. After suffering through an hour and a half lecture on sorting algorithm analysis, I met with the professor. I asked her if there was any practical reason for studying these type of algorithms. She knew my background and that I had been developing applications for a number of years, so she challenged me with a homework assignment that I'll never forget. The class was mainly theoretical, so all the homework up to that time had revolved around writing pseudocode and not actual functional programs. She told me to spend the rest of the week building functional programs that implemented the algorithms that we'd been studying. Honestly, I thought the assignment would be a breeze. I'd been building production applications for years, so how hard could it be to build a few basic sorting algorithms? It turns out, shockingly hard. I spent the full remainder of the week building out a handful of sorting algorithms in Ruby, and I struggled through each one, even the easy ones. What I discovered in my algorithm class was that creating sorting modules forced me to work through a wide variety of language components, most of which I'd rarely used in regular applications. For example, to implement the quicksort algorithm, I had to write code that included how to partition an array, swapping array values, performing recursion, which means that the method needs to call itself, implementing a randomized method to select a pivot value, and a number of other tasks. I had used each one of these types of features in some form or another in previous projects. However, this was the first time I had to combine the full set of components into a single method and have them work together seamlessly. And that was for a single algorithm. By the end of the assignment, I discovered that I had learned more about the language that I had been working with than I had in years. That is the top reason why it's important to understand sorting algorithms. There's not really a reason for implementing your own sorting algorithm from scratch for a production application. However, in the course of learning them, you're going to discover advanced facets of a language along with programming design patterns that will give you an edge as a developer. In addition to combining multiple language components, sorting algorithms also help you understand program accuracy and speed. Just like any type of program, sorting algorithms are not valid unless they're accurate. Imagine if you had an array such as this, and your sorting algorithm almost worked, like this. The type of behavior would make the entire program useless. Sorting algorithms give an abstract way of studying program accuracy. 
You don't have to worry about other development tasks such as system configuration or working with different framework dependencies. Instead, you're able to simply focus on your data input and outputs. Lastly, you can't have a discussion about sorting algorithms without mentioning performance. This component is vital to understanding why it's important to understand sorting algorithms and how the study will help you improve your skill as a developer. Let's think back to the early days of Twitter. Twitter was originally a Ruby on Rails application, and the basic functionality of sending a tweet and viewing others' tweets is the same today as it was back when they launched. However, if you remember the early days of the application, you'll know that the site went down constantly. There were a number of reasons for the poor performance of Twitter early on. However, the main issue was that it was not built with scalability in mind. This meant that it worked perfectly fine for a small number of users. However, with tens of millions of users in tweets, the system would crash dozens of times per day. The story of Twitter reminded me of the difference between algorithms. Are all sorting algorithms created equal? Not even close. For example, if you use the bubble sort algorithm on a collection of 300,000 integers, it will take 9 minutes to complete. However, if you use a quick sort algorithm, it will sort the same collection of 300,000 integers in less than a second. This type of performance variance can only be understood when you get under the hood and truly understand how sorting algorithms work. I hope that this has been a helpful guide for answering the question of why are sorting algorithms important to understand as a developer. In the show notes, I've included links to some tutorials on sorting algorithms if you want to extend your own knowledge on the subject.